As a public defender, Judge Karen fought for her client's rights. She was elected to the bench because she believes in doing the right thing. I'm very passionate about helping people, period. Sometimes life pulls you from up here to down here to teach you a lesson, and you're in a valley right now. There are lessons in this valley. I hope you learn from them. Objective, independent justice. You can always turn your life around. If you keep walking, you can overcome whatever circumstances you're facing. This is Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Paul Descar is suing his neighbor, Dan Bromel, in the amount of $280. Mr. Descartes claims Mr. Bromo used a judo move to flip him into his car and says it caused damage to the windshield. All right, Mr. Descartes, you're suing for $280 representing your broken windshield, is that right? That is correct. And your neighbors? Yes, correct. How long have you been neighbors? Three years now. Three years. Uh, how was your relationship as neighbors? Um, I would say it started off all right, but uh, Pretty soon after he moved in, he began uh, running his business off his front lawn, so it kind of got salty after that. What type of business were you running off of your front lawn? Yeah, I'd, uh, I'm a mechanic. I work on cars. Right. So it never really was a good start for us. Uh, when you say you work on cars, you're what they call a shade tree mechanic? You're fixing <laughs> well, cars in your front yard? Yeah, I'm a freelancer, yes. I get my jobs from uh, fr friends, family, neighbors. In a residential neighborhood? Yes, in my driveway, not in the street or anything. It okay. isn't my well, problem. That doesn't mean where, where I no live, way. you couldn't do that. Yeah. And so you're telling me that there are no ordinances that he's violating? Well, not necessarily. I've talked to the uh, the housing uh, department. Authority, okay. Yeah, whatever it's called. And uh, they said since he's not technically on anybody else's property, or he can like that, run a mechanic can, shop on his. Essentially, property. He, yeah, I guess so. And I've I've talked to him several times about how his the oil from his cars leaks onto the sidewalk and that right. type of stuff. Do you have any pictures for me to see? Um, I don't have pictures of the damage. I do right. have pictures of my neighborhood, though. Like okay, the let me see pictures such. of the neighborhood. Okay. Oh, so. All the, You've been running this uh, mechanic business for the three years you've been living there? Yes, I have. Now, I just want to say this real quick. Now, my neighbor Paul here is definitely full of himself, and I'm not paying a dime. Look, ever since the day one... Well, did one... you rehearse what you're going to say to me? Because I didn't ask you anything about the case yet. <laughs> so I'll let you know when we can get to that point, okay? Thank you. Okay, so I'm looking at the neighborhood. All right, so nobody has a fence out front, so every yard just runs yeah, into the next yard. Yeah, and we're, it's a friendly neighborhood, too. Everyone knows each other. We all get along pretty okay. well. Okay, so how did we get in court today? Well, uh, the damage is to my vehicle. Right, so how yeah. did that happen? Well, um, it's there's a long backstory that led up to this, but... Tell so, me the short version of that long story. Okay, so he has this dog, this great big German Shepherd. Okay, now and, we have a dog. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's always roaming around the neighborhood. Right. A German Shepherd. A big German Shepherd. He never has it on leash, and right. it leaves these landmines on my lawn. You mean he's pooping on your lawn? Yeah. Is that true? That's correct. No, is that, that true? is not true. Well, that okay, is let's yeah. start. Do you have a German Shepherd? Yes, of course I do. Does he roam the neighborhood? Yes, he does, and he's does very he friendly. Does he poop? He poops, and I pick it up when it's on my lawn. I do pick it up. When you pick but it up? What? doesn't pick so, it up. Excuse oh, me. Sorry. I could do my job. Okay. You pick it up when it's on your lawn? Yeah, because he's trained well. He's trained well to what? To take his business in my front lawn. Oh, so you train the dog to just do his business in your yard? Yeah. He doesn't go up and down the street doing business in other people's yard? The only business he does is just be friendly with other kids in the neighborhood, uh -huh. just plays around. And every neighbor around us, like, loves him. They have no right. problem with me even working on cars. Right. He's the only problem. So when he's running around the neighborhood, he goes, oh, I got to go, he comes back to your yard? Yes, because he just I don't plays with other it. kids. I don't believe it. So tell me what happened. So since this has been going on for three years, and I've confronted him about it, first right. I was nice. Right. First few times I said, hey, like, I understand that your dog is on off a leash and you, you know, if it does go have, it does this business, at least pick it up, you know? Even if it is on my lawn, at least just come pick it up and acknowledge the fact that it's your dog's, you know, business. Right. And so this one time he says, he's, he does it right in front of me. And so I bring him over. He's working on his car in his front yard. I say, hey, look, Rover, your dog, just pooped right. in front of my lawn. Can you come right. please pick it up? You brought him right over there. I brought him right over. Right. I said, hey, this is enough is enough. Right. I've had enough. This has been going on for three years. I've confronted you multiple times. And every single time you say no. Did he tell you, did this happen the way he's telling me? <laughs> Not that way. He pulled me by the sleeve, dragged me okay, pretty wait, much to his lawn. But did he say to you, Rover has just done his business in my yard and I want you to come and see? 
Yeah, he said that. Okay, and then what happened? When he said that, then what? Then he came up, I just didn't believe it. Like, it's the same story, just different day. And I'm, right. I'm not going to go see this. I'm working on a car right now. Right. And so he drags me by, like, come, you have to go see this. Takes me right. by the sleeve. Right. He's, like, looking, like, look at all this, like, landmines around my right. yard. Did like, you see landmines? I did. How many? There was three total. Right, okay. So, therefore, he was, like, telling me, look at all these dogs, pretty much talking to me like a dog. Look at us, look how big they are. You're gonna have to pick them up, all this. Like, right. look, like, just treating me like a dog. So that's when I just said, no, I walk away. As soon Is as that I walk... right? Did he walk away? <laughs> he, yeah, he tried walking away and I tried to get his attention. And that's when he. How did you try to get his attention? I just tapped him on the shoulder. What? He turned his back to me when I was trying to talk to him. Okay, use Chris as an example, please. Okay. So, so... he turns his back and decides so... to go back home. Yeah, I'm showing him the landmine on right. my lawn. Right. He and turns so... his back to go home he and turns you do his back. what? I put my hand on his shoulder like this. And then what happened? Him. And then he grabs my arm, right. flips me onto okay. my own car, and breaks my windshield. Coming up on Supreme Justice. He threw you against the windshield and it cracked. Yes. And then what happened? And then well, pretty much, like, I just left. Uh, I had nothing to, to like, I mean, when do the windshield say. cracked, you threw him like that, you just walked away? And later. So we get to Easter Sunday and then what happened? I started hearing popping noises in the speakers right. and the people in the back started walking out and I had no idea why they were walking out. Closed captioning provided by if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Paul Descar, who is suing Dan Bromo for property damage. Do you agree with the testimony he just gave about how it happened? He, after he pulled me with the sleep, I told him, I no, guess no, no. A warning. He just demonstrated to me how it happened. Right. It, do you agree with that demonstration? No, he... I felt okay, the pressure so let's here use in Chris. my neck. Let's go on this side. So you go to walk away. Chris is you walking yeah, away. Walking no, no, no. Oh. Chris is you walking away. Then what And happened? then I feel pressure here on my neck. And here. then what? And then what? And, uh, and that's when I grab him with my arm and use the momentum that he's using. Right. And I just get him and just right. fling and just him, flip over, him over. Not knowing how far, I apologize, uh -huh. how far this vehicle was, <laughs> then he landed on top of it. Right. Well, the yards don't look that big. No, I was walking away. We were in the driveway. You was right in the driveway yeah, yeah. and this picture you showed me, is that this picture? This picture? Yep, that's the driveway. So it all happened in this driveway yeah, right the... here. So your car was here? Yes. All right. And so then he, he threw you against the windshield and it cracked? Yes. And then what happened? And then, well, pretty much, like, I just left. Uh, I had nothing to, to like, I mean, when the windshield say. cracked, you threw him like that, you just walked away? <laughs> well, I was looking at him like I couldn't do anything more. I, I just reacted. I was shocked myself. Right. I, I only used it for self-defense. I just got triggered. You know, it's judo. It's not meant for, like, striking or using a weapon. Uh -huh. It's just meant for, like, self-defense. Now, okay. some people may But what use... were you defending yourself against? With that pressure, that, that hand... Right. Right that, here that, on my neck. That, that hand on the back of your neck. Well, first he was dragging me onto his lawn, and I, and right. I warned him not to be touching me like that. I right. even it was he was but being very But you could have used the jitsu or whatever you said you used the whole time. He was dragging you though. You didn't do it then. Because at first he was showing me, and I was telling him to warning him to right. not do that. Right. He still kept using his loud demeanor, and he kept getting in my face. Were there any people around? Any neighbors? Anybody see this? Um, not at the time. I think my kids were inside. So uh -huh. I don't think anybody really saw. Okay, let me ask, what has happened since then? This was five or six months ago. Probably what has happened since? Ago. Since uh, his dog continues to poop on my so lawn. So nothing has he changed. He continues. To, I mean, he has. I've seen him. I will give him this much credit that right. he has come and picked up the poop a few times. Right. But he comes it, over to your yard. Comes over to my yard because he knows. Stop. Me. Is that true? It's that only... you come over to his yard a few times and pick this stuff up? It only happened once, because I actually seen my dog do it okay, once. Okay, but remember, he's trained. Yeah. To only do it yeah. right there in your yard. Like, he understands boundaries mm -hmm. and everything. With no fences, even. Mm. That this right here is my little piece of heaven. He knows that without a gate, a fence, or anything. That's what you told me earlier. So now, it's not true. We do know that... I don't even have to listen to testimony, okay? I can use my what? Common damn sense. And it doesn't make any sense. Number one, the city ordinance requires that you keep your dog on your property. Because if your dog bites somebody, 
it's, it's, you would be absolutely liable for any injuries. If that dog were to bite somebody, even if he was provoked, you would have no defense because you're supposed to keep your dog on your premises. That's the first thing. And the fact that you are working on cars in your driveway in a residential neighborhood, I cannot believe the housing authority, I don't live here, mm. that the housing authority told you that it was okay for him to do that. Your Honor, also Because there's no way he could be, first of all, he's a mechanic, he needs a damn license. Yeah. And a business license requires a business address. So you got two strikes against you. You got a big dog pooping on everybody's yard and you are working on cars and using oil in a residential neighborhood where children are playing. Exactly. Let me see your receipt for the windshield. Uh, it should be in your- uh, It's yeah, in this packet. Yeah. All right, so you paid $280. Mm -hmm. You know, just for the sake of argument, if I bought you were acting in self-defense, you know, the law requires that you meet blow for blow. All right, so even if you agree he touched you in the back, it did not warrant this throwing him over your, over your, you I mean, you could have just knocked his hand away, but to take him and use your jujitsu move and throw him over your shoulders and all of that was an excessive use of force. So I'm going, I'm ready to rule. Anything else you want to say? When yeah. are you moving out? <laughs> Me and my wife were saving up, so uh, hopefully at the end of this year, we'll right. be out of there. Right. Try to get into a gated community where they have oh. rules. Yeah. You know, that's why a lot of people move to gated communities, because mm -hmm. there's rules. He can't paint his house purple. He can't have his dog running around, and he couldn't work on cars in the yard. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready to rule. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $280. Good luck to you. Thank you. All rise. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $280. I'm sorry I attacked you, but you shouldn't have put hands on me like that. I wouldn't have to if you picked up after your dog. Coming up. He told you the day before that it sounds like these speakers that you have are about to go bad. I, and I felt like he were just trying to get over. He was trying to get over on me. Well, it looks like yet. he was right. <laughs> Cause your speakers went bad. Closed captioning provided by you're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Pastor Ryan Swenson is suing AV technician Jeremy Cobbs in the amount of $800. Pastor Swenson claims Mr. Cobbs is to blame for the speaker's malfunctioning in the middle of his sermon on Easter Sunday, ruining the service. All right, Mr. Swenson, you are suing uh, Mr. Cobbs for a breach of contract, is that right? Yes, I am. Okay, for $800. Yes. What do you do for a living? Uh, I am a pastor of a church. Oh uh, yeah, what kind of church is it? It's a Baptist church, miss. How long have you been a pastor? I've been a pastor for four years. All right, and what do you do for a living? I am a second degree production. I sell audio, I provide audio, visual effects, uh -huh. and uh, like So microphone. you're a special effects person? No, just audio. Uh, audio. Audio oh, okay. So how do you know the plaintiff? Uh, I know him because uh, he had came to me saying that he needed extra equipment for his sermon for Sunday for Easter, which is very big. Right. And so uh, in these four years, you've been at this same church? Yes. And in Easter's past, was there anything different that you had done? We would do every every sun every Easter Sunday every year was a diff, was very different okay. thing. But so you thought this particular Easter was going to be a big thing. I just wanted to do something different from what I did last year. Okay. So every year is all we always come up. We get together. We come up with something a special. different something special. Okay. Yeah. So how much were these services, Mr. Cobbs? How much were the services? So it was a deposit of eighteen eight. $800. Okay. And the full price is $1,600. $1,600. Okay, so you get there. When do you go in? Do y'all have a rehearsal? Yes. Or, yes okay, you had a rehearsal? When a, did you do the rehearsal? A uh, day before Easter Sunday. Okay, how did that go, the rehearsal? Making sure this equipment is working and doing what you want. The rehearsal went amazing. I, I, I couldn't be, I was I was pleased. Uh, the rehearsal went the way that I, in, the way I envisioned it going. Right. And it just... I couldn't ask for anything more. Right. Did at you that go through point. your entire sermon for the rehearsal? Yes. Coming up. He told you the day before that it sounds like these speakers that you have are about to go bad. I felt like he was trying to get over on me. Well, it looks like he was right, because your speakers went bad. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. 
Supreme Justice is back with the case of Pastor Ryan Swenson, who is suing Jeremy Cobbs for breach of contract. So it looked like everything was good. You paid him a deposit. Yes. And you agreed that you were going to pay the balance when? At the end of the... Before the service actually starts. Because I was happy at that point. So okay, I'm but like, I'm okay. saying, so you paid him $1,600? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we get to Easter Sunday, and then what happens? I get through everything. I'm doing everything. Everything was flowing the way that I wanted it to, right. to, to go. All right. And then, then now I get to my, my sermon. Your sermon. Okay. I started hearing popping noises in the speakers, right. and and because they the, the speakers are overhead, they were accustomed into the church. Right. So what what makes that even more interesting is that I the people in the back started walking out, and I had no idea why they were walking out. The, the people, people in, in the back of the church started walking out. Started walking out of the service. Yes. Where were you? I was controlling the volume. I was at the mixing okay. board. What was going on with the popping sound? We talking uh, with about with the popping sound. Uh, from Pastor Ryan speaking so loud right. to where it had blew the speakers out. Right. Uh, when we was doing rehearsal, right. I had notified Pastor that one of your, some of your speakers don't sound good. It's like a little hiccup sound right. to where they're about to give out. Right. You, he I'm, told you that? He did tell me that. Okay. He did, he and did, did you suggest any? Yes, I made what a suggestion you suggest? that you sh he should he can pay an extra four hundred dollars for right. my personal speakers. So which for I, you to bring your speakers he, in. Yeah, which they're called tower speakers. Oh, okay. One, well, so he like told that. you that your speakers didn't sound that good. But when when we did the ran when we did the run through, we even added an extra hour. Everything right. was great. Right. And nothing went wrong but at that time. But he told so I, you the day before that it sounds like these speakers that you have are about to go bad. I, and I felt like he were just trying to get over he was trying to get over on me well it looks like he was right because <laughs> your speakers went bad judge karen's verdict when supreme justice returns promotional consideration provided by you're watching supreme justice with judge karen and so now you're suing him for what the 800 dollars that you made him but the, the yeah the 800 dollars for the the ending balance of the for what I owed him altogether and the reason that is is because when he suggested that I upgrade at that right. point right um I didn't see anything wrong and the man told you the day before your speakers look like they're gonna go you got a church full of people you could be bringing in more people into your church but instead of using that situation of what happened as an opportunity you went through this thing with the speakers popping until the sermon was over and decided that you was going to sue this man. Well, and the reason being is because I thought that it was something that he didn't do right because, like I said, the rehearsal went right. great. What's going on with the speakers now? The speakers don't work. <laughs> I'm ready to rule. Pastor. Judgment for the defendant. Good luck to you. All rise. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I should have taken your advice and got the speaker upgrade. Well, I'll be available next year. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.